Hi everybody and welcome to Artisan Anchor. Um, today I am going to make vegetable soup for my family and I just wanted to take an opportunity to record that um, in case anybody wanted an easy vegetable soup to make. I've been making this one now for about 14 years. Slight variation. Soup's one of those things where you can add or take away um, whatever trips your trigger at that moment. This particular soup I used to make with cubes of uh, stew meat or just stew meat. Typically it was venison. But when we moved down to Arkansas back in 2000, we had been invited over to someone's house for vegetable soup, and we went. And in their vegetable soup I had never seen before was hamburger, and it just, <laughs> I think back now, and I, I laugh about it because it, it threw me for a loop. I'm thinking, oh, this is going to be horrible. And come to find out, I was so wrong. It was the absolute best soup I had ever had. Um, and from that point on, I was sold on hamburger in my vegetable soup. One of the benefits of hamburger over stew meat is it is easier on the pocketbook. Um, if you're not harvesting your own by hunting or if you're not growing your own, it is a little bit more cost effective. And it, it seems to go further. You, you actually are like getting uh, little bits of hamburger and most spoonfuls if you're, you know, if you're a meat eater. If you're not a meat eater, then it's not a big deal. And by the way, this soup can be made without meat. I've done that several times, um, but we do like the hamburger in it. The other thing about this soup, you'll find when I cook, um, I try to make enough for my family for two days. That way I'm in the kitchen one day and I'm out the next. It, it's worked out over the years to be better for our family. Um, just a little tidbit in case anyone else doesn't do that or would like to try that. Um, that just means doubling what you're, you're doing and making sure you have enough room in uh, your refrigerator, or in our case the ice box. Uh, to store it for the following day and then you've got, you got, really have to do sometimes all I have to do is uh, make up a batch of bread or a batch of rolls just to help to extend it on the second day. So with that said, um, we'll start the soup and I'll just, it's real simple, it's not going to take long to show you what, you know, what we throw in it um, and again, soup's just a, one of those things that personal preference but this just gives, you know, someone who hasn't made soup before kind of a starting foundation or someone who's looking for something a little different maybe than what they're already doing. So, thanks. Alright, one of the first things I do when I make my soup is um, I put my potatoes and my carrots in to boil first. Those things take the longest to cook. And you can see that, you know, I've already peeled them, rinsed them, and they're sitting in water in the pan. I just have enough water over the top to cook those. Uh, I want to leave enough room for uh, my tomato juice and whatever else I put in there so it's not going to taste like water is the, the point there. The other thing is this soup can be made with fresh vegetables or canned and frozen. Now I try to stay away from the canned and frozen as much as possible. But you know life isn't always perfect and our garden was not up to snuff this year. So I do have to use those um, to help supplement what we do have from the garden. The thing, the reason I try to stay away from those items is because one, I like to know the, the place where they come from and lots of times on your packages you have no idea. Uh, sometimes you might get lucky and it might say USA, product of USA, but most often it doesn't. And at that you don't even know what portion of the USA it comes from. The other thing is most cans and frozen packages have what's called BPA in them. And we try to avoid that at all, all costs, especially with uh, young children in the home. We don't want to expose them to that. So we'll put this on to boil and then we'll come back uh, to show what else we add to it. All right. Now that our potatoes and carrots are at a boil, I'm going to add the meat. What I have in here right now is I have about two and a half pounds of ground beef. It's lean ground beef. Um, when I cooked it or browned the ground beef, I went ahead and poured the liquid in there. If there had been a lot of fat in there, I would not have poured it in the soup, but it was water that I had added because it was drying out as it cooked. There's about a dozen decent sized carrots in there and about uh, six uh, medium sized potatoes. Now I'll add two quarts of tomato juice. Um, this is home canned juice if you, you buy it in a half gallons at the store. This is basically the base with the water and then it, later I'll add what um, a lot of people refer to as Rotel. You can pick it up in the store as Rotel. You can use diced tomatoes uh, and chilies with it or uh, 
a hotter pepper with it. We buy a diced tomato and a jalapeno pepper that is a GMO free product. Our soup's been simmering for a while. It's time to add the vegetables. Um, now if you're using fresh vegetables, but again, the first thing you want to cook are the harder the root style vegetables. Um, whether it's frozen or fresh, they're going to cook the remaining vegetables as far as like corn, peas, green beans, etc. They're going to cook about the same amount of time. So once you start to feel your carrots and your potatoes start to get a little soft then you add add those um, so they kind of end up cooking in the end being done about the same time uh, again if you have fresh vegetables far superior than the frozen but this is all i have right now so this is what we're going to use now what i'll do is i'll cover the lid and i'll simmer for about another 20 minutes the soup itself to cook from start to finish probably takes maybe 45 minutes but the rule of thumb with soup the old rule of thumb is the longer it simmers the better it is so you can cook this way in advance and just let it simmer on the back make sure you keep it covered or your uh, liquid will evaporate and you don't want that to happen because um, if you end up doing that and you have to add more tomato juice then it starts to become too tomatoey the flavor is too tomatoey because now the water is gone um, so it's just best to keep it covered at this point in state. All right, our soup is all but done. Um, it's been simmering. I've removed the portion of soup that I want to keep out before I add the rotel. This is, it's not, this is not rotel. I'm sorry, I use the word rotel. The rotel is the brand of, um, name for the diced tomatoes and peppers. This is a store brand and it is a, again, this is a um, GMO free uh, brand. This, this particular store, it's naturals are part of the GMO free project. So when I don't use uh, homegrown peppers and tomatoes, this is what I use. But so I, I like to put in two to three uh, 14 and a half ounce cans. When we first had wrote, uh, the tomatoes and peppers in the vegetable soup, again, it was down in Arkansas and my brother-in-law had made vegetable soup and it was really good but it, it was really hot and we didn't know that he had put the peppers and tomatoes in it and um, my husband and I looked at each other and we saw that we were perspiring on our foreheads and my brother-in-law sitting across from us laughing because he knew what was going on um, we were lightweights when it came to spices we had ne never really spiced too much up at that point in time so it did not take much for us to feel the effects of the peppers from it. Now we it, it's so bland to us without having the peppers and the chilies in it. Um, and I, I keep saying peppers, but it's green chilies, but uh, peppers in your garden, uh, um, jalapeno peppers work well too if you don't have the chilies. So the three cans we, goes in this size of pot. Um, now if you don't like it that hot, uh, if you're not used to hot stuff, that will make it really hot. So I would recommend maybe trying to can at a time until you reach your, your tolerant level there. All right, so there it is. Um, oh, th another thought here. I used to, when we used a lot of processed foods, I did not add salt to my cooking. I figured at the table we could put the salt on um, that we wanted. And when we went to using a lot less processed foods, more of the whole food itself, I realized that there was i realized then how much salt was really added to the processed foods because the food became very bland when we were using started using the natural product product or the whole product and so if you were to taste this now if you were to make it the way that i just said it would taste really bland that if you were to taste it prior to putting in the chilies and the um, tomatoes but i would still recommend that you add a tablespoon or two tablespoons to this pot as it simmers um, to help add in the flavoring. All right, so this is it. Um, with a roll, it's a really good meal. Thanks for watching. We appreciate you. God bless.